Welcome to the Range DPS Role Actions Guide. Here we'll go through our role actions to explain the uses for newbies, while still going through multiple or higher-end content uses. You should be treating these skills as an extension of your job toolkits, with some actions being extremely key for proper survival. As a DPS, your main goal is to do the most damage you can, but your role actions can do that and much more. This more bit is what is commonly overlooked while being the most important aspect of your role actions. At the very least, improved survival in solo content will be proof enough of that. We have six role actions as a ranged job, with each one having a very different effect from the last, meaning a bunch of different situations you'll want to learn how to recognize. We'll start seeing those more as we go through the actions. Let's get checking them now. Before I get into specific skills, I want to emphasize that almost all role actions are OGCD, off-global cooldown abilities. These can be weaved, used between weapon skills or spell cast. You should have a few of these in your normal toolkit, obviously, but noting that these are almost all OGCD skills emphasizes how easy to use they can be. Level 6, Leg Graze. On a 30 second cooldown, this causes a single target to be heavied for 10 seconds. This is a 40% movement speed debuff to a single enemy for 10 seconds. Outside of solo overworld stuff, this will have no benefits. Party content, a lot of stuff will be immune anyway. If things are at a point that you would want to use leg raise to save yourself, it probably won't change anything. The only potential uses for leg raise I can think of otherwise is some old raids that require you to slow a target to delay them slightly. That may have also just been stuns anyway. Level 8, Second Wind. On a 2 minute cooldown, this will instantly restore your health by a potency of 500. Given your range job, your forte isn't healing. This potency will scale off of dexterity and not mind, which is what healing usually scales off of. Potency of 500 also means little to nothing, given you don't have a big healing toolkit to compare the skill to. If you want to get the feel of the power of Second Wind, just hit the button outside of combat. Check how much it healed for and compare that to your max HP. All attacks and heals have variants, so it will be weaker or stronger at random. Heals can also crit, giving a large boost to the power of the skill. If desired, keep hitting the button until you see it crit to get a feel for that power too. Generally, I mentally assume Second Wind to be a 15% heal rather than a specific amount or potency. Crits of course will be way more. This makes it easier to mentally justify when or where I want to be using Second Wind, which can be often as a ranged job since you are on the squishier end of DPS. Where will you want to be using Second Wind? Well, anytime you have taken a decent chunk of damage. In solo content, your best healer is going to be your Chocobo, who may be far too inconsistent for your needs. He's also not available in solo duties. Second Wind used when you've taken a bit of damage will keep you going for a bit longer. In some duties, it may actually be the only reason you survive. Looking at you surprisingly hard samurai duty at Costa del Sol. Which if that didn't make it obvious, melees also get this. In party content, this skill will still see plenty of use. If the healer dies, you don't have many choices to keep yourself alive. Second Wind is one of them. Even if the healer is alive, we can make use of Second Wind. Some attacks do vary damage based on proximity, or just will choose one player to take extra damage. If you are taking more damage than you should normally, pop Second Wind to make the difference. This especially includes avoidable damage. If you were supposed to dodge an attack, you will have taken extra damage that the healer might not be expecting with a healing rotation. At a poor time, they might not be able to heal you before the next unavoidable hit. Second Wind will be an extra bit of health to undo your mistake even just a little. Most mistakes like this also come with vulnerability stacks, which make you take extra damage. Even if the healer is able to get you a heal, it might only be enough to offset the difference of a normal hit. That extra multiplier will still end up killing you, unless you second wind to have the HP needed. Any way you feel like an extra heal is needed for yourself, pop second wind off. Survival is always important, for better or worse. Level 10, Foot Graze. On a 30 second cooldown, this binds the target in place for 10 seconds. Your auto attack will also be turned off when executing because any damage to the target will free them from their bind. Even auto attacks will do so. This is somehow even worse than leg raise. Sure, it allows you to put distance between you and a target, but you're a ranged job anyway. It again has no real use in party content outside of maybe a raid. 
Level 20, Peloton. On a basically non-existent 5 second cooldown, this gives a buff to you and all party members within 20 arms of yourself for 30 seconds. Your run speed is slightly improved, but less than say, sprint. It also immediately ends the moment enmity is generated on each player, which means this serves absolutely zero use in combat. This is mostly for towns, overworld exploration that is a short walk that doesn't make mounting up worth it, and between packs of enemies. In dungeons, there's walk time between groups of enemies, or before and after bosses. You want to be using sprint for wall-to-wall -wall pulling, so Peloton will speed up your team slightly for reducing this downtime. This serves no real practical purpose otherwise. It at least is better than leg or foot graze, but you can't make any real major difference with this. And make sure you're not spamming it either. The flash is a little bit annoying for the effect, so spamming it pointlessly is a good way to get you kicked, and rightfully so. Level 24, Head Graze. Ah, finally, grazing being useful. Head Graze has a 30 second cooldown and will interrupt a target spell cast. When this skill is useful is a bit obvious when you know what to look for. All enemies are completely immune to interruptions up until it begins to use a skill that can be interrupted. That being, any skill where the cast bar is pulsing like so. When the cast bar pulses, Head Graze will stop the skill from being completed. Make the cast bar bigger, use HUD layout to split it off from the enemy HP bar, move it to somewhere else on your screen that you will see it better, whatever it takes. Be ready for when these bars start to flash. That means it's time for Head Graze. In casual content, it's not going to exactly make or break a run, with maybe one exception in Shadowbringers. In high-end content, failing to Head Graze an interruptible skill will likely lead to instant wipe. Bosses will buff themselves, debuff you, do deadly damage, whatever it might be. The stakes of interrupts get pretty high, but that's okay, there's plenty of room for you to learn the timing over multiple pulls, and of course, a few casual content bosses with the interrupts you can practice on. Level 32, Arm's Length. On a 2 minute cooldown, Arm's Length comes with two effects and will remain on you for 6 seconds. The first and main one you will use is that this is a skill that ignores most knockback and draw in effects. This includes another roll action that healers have, Rescue. In many boss fights, they will do moves that might not even do damage, only pushing players around. These often come with arenas that you can fall off of or have death walls. These moves go from minor annoyance to potential death. Arm's Length says nah to that and allows you to ignore certain knockback mechanics entirely. For an example of a current fight that has a huge spotlight on this skill, Dragon Song Reprise Ultimate has a mechanic that essentially requires the use of arm's length to defeat a knockback. Some other attacks in this same fight ignore knockback mitigations. Point is, this truly is an important aspect to get used to. Learn when to arm's length to negate knockback if only for safety. Mistakes happen and you may actually be in a bad spot or bad angle. You could get knocked off the arena just barely because you weren't as perfectly placed as expected. Better to arm's length than die because you stubbornly ignored it. The other use is for solo play or when the tank ends up dying. Any enemy that strikes you, not magic, will be given a debuff for 15 seconds. This is a 20% slow, which means attack speed. Functionally, a 20% damage mitigation for 15 seconds, which may be enough for the healer to keep you going. Though if you have a non-ranged co DPS, they are much more likely to get the enemies instead of you. Ideally, your tank will never mess up in trash pulls to need this last-ditch effort, and most every boss does not care about this slow and is instead immune, so that leaves the overworld uses. Every little edge you can get is nice, and it all does add up eventually. Be ready to use it for these rarer situations, and make a liberal use of it to delete knockback moves. Then get sad when you go to use it in a savage fight, and still get launched halfway across the arena because it's one of those moves that ignores arm's length. That covers all of our ranged roll actions in record time. These skills cover some issues we may run into as we progress through the game or otherwise help us be better party members. At worst, we can make a small difference in the course of a duty. In the best case, we'll be making or breaking the run with our actions in high-end duties. Make sure you get a good understanding of these skills, because you can't truly say you're playing your role if you ignore roll actions, now can you? Thank you for watching this guide on your ranged roll actions. I hope you've seen how important roll actions can be as part of your toolkit. A dead DPS does zero DPS, and some improve survival in one way or the other. Be sure to ask questions on the skills if you don't quite understand their uses, and seek to improve just a little bit extra. 
Take care and may the power of Anadid Hogsley waste to your enemies. And a big thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, and an extra, extra special thanks to my big dragons who are... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon Al-Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Zidia Dios de San, Serix, Ethan Olson, Frasier97, Greg, James Hall, JB Hruska, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Marlon Sebo, Mizella, Nick Griffin, Poppins205, T-Rogue, Timmy, Tabood, and Zero Two. Thank you all again, and have a good night.